The headline from AFP via MSN.com, World Wildlife Plummets More Than Two-Thirds in 50 Years Index. Global animal, bird, and fish populations have plummeted more than two-thirds in less than 50 years due to rampant overconsumption, experts said Thursday, in a stark warning to save nature in order to save ourselves. And the story has a, a picture of a rhinoceros walking through a field with some brush fires burning behind it. Pretty alarmist kind of story. And, you know, I'm not one to wring my hands over the cost of economic development. You know, human beings are going to use and use up in some ways natural resources in order to live well. And that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm a libertarian. Uh, my, my concern is not some, you know, liberal fantasy ideal of preserving everything, but I care about the environment. I, I care about animals. I mean, I am, I am a consumer choice vegan because I believe the non-aggression principle should be extended as, as far as we practically can. And I, I'm, I, I think there's a kind of dangerous whiplash effect when the liberals who in many ways are connected to organizations profiteering from people feeling a kind of environmentalist guilt, uh, the overhype, global warming, climate change. Well, it's not global warming anymore because we can't say warming. It's, it's just climate change. And some of that's natural, but a lot of it isn't. And it really should be no surprise that we are mismanaging natural resources in some truly disturbing, destructive ways that I think libertarian environmentalists with a, a, a common sense approach that I think can unite people around these basic irrefutable principles of, of just smart management of natural resources without the liberal emotional hype can say, look, we need to look at this. And a lot of the problems with a liberal status approach to environmentalism is that there's a government policy knee-jerk response. When it com comes to global warming and, and, and general pollution, you know, I don't, I don't know the absolute answer. I'm confident that we can innovate our way out of this if we get government out of the way and no matter what the threat from global warming might be, it does not justify a violent response towards our fellow human beings. And that's the only thing government can do is threaten people with violence to get them to comply. And one of the most dangerous ways that this liberal knee-jerk reaction we see uh, applied to preservation of endangered species is by giving government the control of these endangered species and their habitats. And one of the most dangerous examples we see in, in Africa in wildlife management is with just with elephants, just sort of take, let's go with the big obvious example, the elephants in the room, shall we? That when you give governments the, the power and authority to say, well, you, you can't let there be private ownership of elephants because they're too valuable. We have to have government manage them. I mean, that is such an insane backwards idea. And now the proof of the ineffectiveness of this policy is irrefutable because when you give governments the authority and the control, the, the ownership of the habitats and the animals with these endangered species, they don't really have an incentive to actually preserve them. And so poachers are able to beat their security. Right. I mean, why would why would you if you were a government official, all you care about is looking good and getting reelected and profiteering from your position of authority. Why would you actually care about preserving natural resources if you're not naturally inclined? You don't have a strong incentive to do that. And so the result has been that poachers have still been able to run rampant all over Africa and the importation uh, of, of endangered species, trophies and parts and, and souvenirs and things like that. Uh, it, it is still a massive problem. You you let there be private ownership. And it doesn't have to be like a single individual profiteering corporation. It could be a public trust. It, it, it could be a foundation. But if you allow there to be private ownership and management, you have an actual incentive for the preservation of those endangered species. And the knee-jerk reaction of turning to government is actually horrific in its results. So human activity has severely degraded three quarters of all land and 40% of Earth's oceans and our quickening destruction of nature 
is likely to have untold consequences on our health and livelihoods. The Living Planet Index, which, tra which tracks more than 4,000 species of vertebrates, warned that increasing deforestation and agricultural expansion were the key drivers behind a 68% average decline in populations between 1970 and 2016. It warned that continued natural habitat loss increased the risk of future pandemics as humans expand their presence in ever closer contact with wild animals. 2020's Living Planet Report, a collaboration between World Wild Wildlife Federation uh, International, WWF, not, not the wrestling people, and the Zoological Society of London is the 13th edition of the biennial publication tracking wildlife populations around the world. This is a staggering loss of Earth's biodiversity, according to Marco Lambertini, the international director for WWF, who said it's an accelerating decrease that we've been monitoring for 30 years, and it continues to go in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah, and as he points out, all this is in a blink of an eye compared to the millions of years that many species have been, have been living on the planet. So, you know, what can we as individuals do about this? And, and this is a big part of, you know, what I'd like to think and, and, and is uh, critical to why I want to live the way that I want to live. And yes, part of that is being a, uh, a consumer choice vegan, but that's, that's only a, a small part of it. And a, a big part of this is just being more conscientious of, of your consumerism, uh, you know, your own lifestyle habits, living off grid for me, living on solar power and well water and, and doing the best I can uh, to, to get away from the pro government corporatist consumerist lifestyle that promotes the destruction of this environmental uh, diversity, the resources that, that create a, a livable environment for us. And most importantly, withdrawing my support from government in every material way possible. And it's so important to point this out that it, it is insane. It is it literally insane. I mean, you have to be completely oblivious to reality or just absurdly ignorant to think that turning to government is, is going to help this problem because the biggest polluter in the world today is a singular institution is the United States military. Yeah. Yeah. Fact check me on it. Look it up. And even without that, why do corporations get away with the kind of environmental destruction that they get away with today? It's because governments protect them from liability. There are plenty of people who have tried to sue major polluters who've tried to sue the government yeah good luck with that and it's governments that that protect them from this liability and it is one of the most destructive rackets of government and we don't talk about this enough frankly because there is an irreparable harm being done to our natural environment to the animal and, and plant species of the world there is a destruction of biodiversity which, in a sense, we, we will never be able to recover from. It, it is, there is a permanent damage being done to our home planet that, uh, frankly, is not worth it. And humanity is better than this, and we have to do better. And I think as we evolve past this paradigm of statism and turning to government, we're going to see that there are better ways of managing our home planet, our natural resources, and the, the sooner we get to that point, the better. So I, I hope, uh, I hope as, as a libertarian, I hope that libertarians uh, really start taking the lead on environmental issues because it, it, it's undeniable. It's not just a bunch of whiny liberals going, oh, this species died and that species died because there's, there's a natural extinction phenomena as part of evolution or, oh my God, we polluted this area and this area. And look, now the polar bears. No, like step back. And from just a compassionate, humane, ethical libertarian perspective, you go, yeah, this is fucked up. We are allowing polluters, corporations, governments to, to run rampant over our natural resources in a very destructive way that is not in line with just smart resource management. From, from, there's no way around it. 
And uh, for for libertarians especially, this is a huge opportunity for us to show the world that nonviolent solutions as opposed to government solutions are superior. And at this point where government has failed so miserably, it is clearer than ever that we cannot trust government in any way to be a, a positive force in managing natural resources. One so, comment yeah, on Lenny. Um, so one guy said that's why, speaking of the government, Trump is letting companies that he's invested in drill in the Alaskan wetlands. So that's a perfect example of it going all the way to the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point, Lenny. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, and, and thank you to our, our commenter for pointing that out. Now, when it comes to something specific like that, you know, I don't I don't claim to be any kind of expert to say like, should they be able to drill right there right now? Is this, you know, is there a cost benefit analysis that we can say like, you know, makes this justifiable? Like, hey, we're gonna damage some moose population, but we're gonna we're gonna improve quality of life for, for humans in untold ways by making this energy resource available. But here's the thing, I can 100% condemn it because there's no freaking way that we should still be on fossil fuels and, and dependent on them the way that we are right now. And I'm not I'm not here as some lefty going, we've had this technology, we should all be using it. Because it, yeah, I mean that's true. <laughs> but why why do we not have it? Because government, because government supporting subsidizing fossil fuels, the corruption uh, of, of government protecting them from liability, suppression of alternative energy technologies, solar, wind. And it's not just the technology, but really the implementation of it that, that's being suppressed. And yeah, untold economic consequences.